here to encourage, offer small business insight, and connect you to your maker community. Whether you're working in your studio space or out sharing your story at a farmer's market, welcome. We are John and Sarah Collins, and this is the Modern Forestry Podcast. Hey, this is John and Sarah Collins from Modern Forestry. We are taking a break from the Candle Studio. Our team is pouring brand new scent for the summer, Coastal Breeze. Really excited. We're trying to get new scents out, just constantly growing and trying new things. So that launched last week. But we are here today with Miranda and Jessica from the Traveler's Rest Farmer's Market. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. We're so happy to be down here. This is awesome. We are, yeah, yeah, thrilled. We were sharing last time talking about community and the town Mm -hmm. of Traveler's Rest just you guys are so much a part of our business story, like small Mm. business, but our family culture. We just, Mm. our kids have only grown up going to the market. And so that's just really special to us. But today we're going to talk about Mm. not just the community of TR growing through the market, but really that, that vendor community, which we've been so blessed to be part of the last six years that Mm. I know there's intention behind that. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. Intentionally bringing that vendor community together. (sighs) I first want to talk about a little bit what makes our vendor community so unique and so awesome. Um, One of the things that people might not know about our market is that we are a producer's market, which means that everything that is sold at our market comes from a 50 mile radius um, from around TR. And so it's not things that were made in Illinois, although we had a great salsa vendor apply from (laughs) Illinois, but everything that's at our market is, is made in the upstate area. And we've only ever had two exceptions for that, which is seafood from the coast in Charleston. And we've had exception for our current vendor, who is Paul Family Farms. They make maple syrup because you can't do that around here. (laughs) I I wonder, I saw them and I went and I was Mm -hmm. like, maple syrup, awesome. I didn't know we did. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, I mean. He -hmm. does live here. It's Travis, right? Travis Paul. Mm -hmm. He lives here. Um, But his family is on a farm up in Pennsylvania. So he kind of distributes down here. Um, He just had a baby and they're back at market. And another thing that makes our market kind of unique in our composition of vendors is we have a 50-30-20 rule that we shoot Mm -hmm. for, which is 50% farmers, 30% value added, which is food like chocolates or sauces. And then... Um, 20% artisans. So that would be craft folks like yourself like us. that make really great candles, uh, ceramics, other things like that. Okay. So we are a food forward market as mm-hmm. well, especially in the summers. Although we do a little bit more craft in the fall season, but right. especially in summers, we focus on our farmers and we're really excited to get to host that community as well. Mm-hmm. So I think it's really cool just within the vendor culture, especially among our farmers, most of our farmers are first generation, so oh, wow. nothing was handed down to them. They are completely starting this on their own. And so what we've seen is, I think I would expect it to sort of be like, hold your cards close sort of thing. Like, these are my secrets. I'm figuring it out. <laughs> but because they're all entrepreneurs and starting off, like, it has required its constant innovation. It really frees them to share their process. Mm. and to share what they're learning and so and I mean it's amazing a lot of them are starting on like just like a quarter acre and maximizing that and they're like a one-man show and also working a full-time job yeah Yeah. and farming is not a part-time job (laughs) Um, so give them a high five and maybe buy them a coffee when you see them Um, but it's been amazing to see the collaboration like competition is completely put to the wayside and collaboration is what's key in our market. Mm-hmm. And I think you feel that mm. that is totally there. Um, a lot of our farmers too have gotten such a, a sturdy start at the market. I don't know if y'all are familiar with Providence farms. Yeah. They yep. do meat um, and have I'll expanded. Eggs. They do eggs, I think too. Mm-hmm. And eggs. It's like I've gotten eggs mm-hmm. before. Yeah. They do beef, pork, poultry. They've covered the whole gamut. They have recently started a meat processing facility. They saw a need. It was a huge hole. We have a need. Yes. We're like trying to rent processing equipment. Right. And it's people from around here have been driving like four hours to Georgia. Right. Going to Georgia. And during the pandemic, there was a huge backup because there's one processor in five different farms and people were waiting months to get their products back. And so they have decided they've started a processing facility in Anderson here. And so we're just so proud of them of getting a start at market. And now they've gone Mm -hmm. and replicated filling community needs. Yeah. So it's really, really incredible. You know, another story we love to tell about like the full circle stories Mm -hmm. um, is 
uh, baker who came to our market last year. Would that be December 2020? 2020, yeah. Um, so he would have come. His name is Julian Lowe, and he started Rise Bakery. And he yes. was DHEC, mm-hmm. but he was working out of his garage. It was like his hobby. He's it was cottage like law. after work, yeah. cottage law. And um, of course, yes, very clear. D hack, very clean kitchen. It's all about but board. It was, his, uh, <laughs> it was his hobby that he had a day job. And then he grew that business through coming to the markets so much over a year that he was able to open a storefront wow. in the West Village of Greenville, which is um, a really big accomplishment for him and his bakery. And so this year he's coming back to help our market out kind of like a full circle thing. And so we're just really loving. To, we love to see like whether it's Providence Farm or Rise Bakery kind of just getting to grow all the way um, from just starting out to like really being established Mm -hmm. and kind of like bringing their families along with them too, right? Totally. We really, it's, we joke about the the scooter gang. It is our, (laughs) the market kids and they are a presence in their own. We love them. (laughs) You always see them like they'll have their little basket we do with something called the love basket yeah. which is something right. we give to our musicians to sort of compensate them because a lot of them get their time freely so if you see some little kids asking for things we sent them <laughs> they do they usually whenever they take the basket it's much fuller than if i took the basket <laughs> so yeah. we send them out and it's really cool to see relationships that i that are past saturday morning well and that's mm-hmm. so cool for us too like so our kids are five three and one mm-hmm. peter often uh, we'll go with John early, early in the morning, get his hot chocolate and go to the market. And mm-hmm. he's he's learning community. And so when the basket comes around, mm-hmm. he's learning one of our core values is never pass up an opportunity to be generous. Well, he gets to play that out. And I think yeah. those kids that are growing up in market, it's not, yes, it's about the guests and the community, but it's a, also about that inner community. And I see you guys serving the vendor families mm-hmm. and really trying to help foster those yeah. connections. That's one thing we're also really excited about in 2022. Um, one of our, our vice president of our board, Jim Pfeiffer, mm-hmm. he's actually the owner of Nude Clean. He's awesome. Long yeah, time. He really has good. fantastic bug spray. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. why am I making this? I can go to Jim. He does it so much better. It's easy. It's clean. Yeah. He's got it. you covered. Oh, yeah. So this year, he is, he's always been a big supporter. He kind of already does this. And so mm-hmm. that's a the name word, you know, put, it, put in that authority where they're already doing the work. But mm-hmm. like, he is incredible. And he's heading up our new vendor committee. Um, and so the vendor committee is made up of, I think, six other vendors at the market that kind of can give feedback and they have mm-hmm. their own voice. And that's something that we don't control and they kind of get to do their own thing. And then we're also going to have the vendor committee host vendor town halls, which would be for all of our vendor pool, which is about 100 pe- 120 people. Um, they're not at the market every week. We usually run about 70 people at right. market, 70 vendors on a Saturday. But that vendor... Uh, town halls is for everyone to come to and that's supposed to be like talking about how do you do insurance or social media marketing and kind of just kind of growing their their business skills in community because as we know you can you can google it you can youtube it but there's just nothing like walking beside other people who are on the journey that you're in does something special Mm -hmm. yeah really really neat yeah we could talk about like how to do family and small business which i know is a huge passion of y'all's yeah it is um, with modern (laughs) forestry and so that's just stuff that we want to continue growing as our vendor community with the vendor committee that we started this year. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is awesome. I um I love how the market really does seem to be an incubator for these small businesses, families to get their feet to connect with people and then go. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just it's just really neat to see. And I know we were talking. Summers are slower for us. Like TR Farmers Market, mm. that is kind of our lifeline. Yes. <laughs> June, July, yeah. it's like the oasis in the desert. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's for our schools, but also as yeah. I mean, financially and so yeah. that's yeah. really neat. It's really mm-hmm. neat to see. Yeah, actually, um, I think I've mentioned this to you guys before, but mm-hmm. one of the things that we were trying to think through in moving over to candles full-time which mm-hmm. still makes me smile every time I say it. uh was <laughs> my name is there I'm a candle maker <laughs> people ask this, Not a what joke. do you do for a living <laughs> I make and sell candles and I got some looks from some guys going like and what else <laughs> right <laughs> like you can't do it's like hey you know it's a lot of work but one of the things that was so important to us was knowing where we're going to get our income because mm-hmm. that's it's a big deal yeah, doing the Traveler's Rest Farmer's Market, the work that you guys have done, um, the work that your team has done, the people before you, the mm-hmm. people that work with you, the people yeah. that, the, there's something special there. 
Yeah. That was the that was I was like, okay, we got Swamp Rabbit Cafe and Grocery. Our candles are in, and we have Traveler's Rest. <laughs> we can do this. <laughs> so that was our. That was like the uh -huh. like you like like how do you know if the there's just another step for you out in the darkness? Mm -hmm. TR Farmers Market was like the stone you could feel. You know, like okay, oh. well maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe right. we'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. Love yeah. to hear that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I I love what you're saying about the small businesses collaborate, and we've. Yeah, I've been able to do a couple with different mm -hmm. families and vendors there. But mm -hmm. I think for the most part, entrepreneurs are creatives. Like every step of the process, either it hasn't been laid out before you mm -hmm. or it was, but it no longer works. And so you're constantly, I mean, modern forestry, we're in our seventh year. We're still reinventing going, this isn't mm -hmm. working. How do we do this? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you can Google it, but it's still a computer. But if I can have a conversation yeah. with somebody, mm -hmm. I think small business owners can tend to be protective, rightfully so, of what they've built. Right. But I think the key is if you can tap into that other creative energy, it's it's almost explosive. And the mm -hmm. ideas just start going. And mm -hmm. that's really, really fun to see. And I think those relationships come through, man, you go through a cold market or a rainy market with like torrential weather. You just, you bind together with people. <laughs> and true. I mean, I remember being at TR you have tent weights and it doesn't matter. The tents are going and you're like grabbing some with tents and we'll load you up. And just those relationships are so. We need motorcycle jackets with patches of like, you know, that. I your survived. badge of honor. They are oh, yeah. You had to take all of the tents That's down because so the wind was so strong. And it was like, it was you survived I survived winter 2021. It was, it was so <laughs> yeah. cold that yes. day. We have pictures of you and Glory who wasn't one and she's like in her snowsuit. Just, yeah, she's we're, all. We're bundled. selling candles. Just see a button nose. That's all you see. Yeah. 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 Um, and so one, one thing is I wanted to, uh, to talk a little bit about too, I, it just popped in my head, uh, is how do you do that? How do you be cooperative with other makers? And from, uh, yeah. from hmm. um, uh, um, a, we said earlier, see a need, meet a need, like this is actually a good thing too. Yeah. See a need in yourself and then go meet that in somebody else's life. Because one of the things is that we've gotten people who have asked us like specifically, where do we get our stuff from? Mm -hmm. That's not the kind of cooperation I think that is like hmm. the kind of cooperation that's going to mutually help businesses. It's, it's, it's it just takes wisdom. Like there's yeah. just such yeah. a balance. Like if someone that we don't know is like, Hey, where do you get your jars? I'm like, I don't know who you are. If but, you, but if you're volunteering your, uh, your assistance within relationship, that's, mm -hmm. that's yeah. truly the type of cooperation that I think people are looking for. Mm. Hey, I want to value a relationship with you. Will you join me in this relationship? That's yeah. good. Um, and if that's the key, then, then you can get more and more comfortable with what you share. Mm. Like, cause there are some vendors that so like there's, we've, we've been burned in the past where, cause you know, we're really open people mm -hmm. in the past. We were just like, yeah, this is where we get everything. And like, and then we had a, a whole a company actually start up, uh, like just a few uh, miles away from us. Uh, and uh, it was yeah. like, okay, all right, don't do that again. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're no longer around and I'm not even, I only mentioned it just to- I was like, here, the, I remember you talking about Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, no, they're no longer around. But I did want to mention that just to say like, use wisdom in what you're sharing and also yeah. use wisdom in what you're expecting from other people because it doesn't yeah. help, um, it doesn't help community to demand from other people and say, tell me all of your secrets so that I can do better. I think yeah. what you're saying too about like collaboration within relationship and that like mutual dependence is a hundred percent what we're about as a market, kind of like the opposite. I don't know exactly how to say this without name dropping, but like a prime opportunity or a prime example <laughs> of a large company that is the opposite of what we do yes. is like something that where you expect a lot of impact with very little like personal, yeah. personal risk. If, if I can, I, I'm, trying to think of a clear way to say that but like what we do as a market is relationships collaboration process mm -hmm. and we do that through the market experience yeah. on Saturdays where you come and spend time instead of just coming in and out but you also do that I love hearing that that happens all the way through with the way that products are made mm -hmm. the businesses that we're made up of is like I want to do this right I want to do this in relationship I don't want to take the process the process way instead of the mm -hmm. just the productivity way or right. just the efficiency way yeah. right. but you've probably found that it is more productive in the long term to build relationships and put that investment in um, that's something that we just love seeing all the way through from our vendors to our events to how we run as a market. A hundred percent. You know, don't, don't go, don't play the short game. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Don't just mm -hmm. go tell me where you get your stuff so I can do better as a company. That's not a good thesis. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, 
uh, go to somebody and say, you must be fighting a harder battle than I can. How can I come alongside you in your business and share some of the information that I've learned? So good. And, and I think we have seen that in recent economic culture, like mm. the supply shortages are so real. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there was a um, year and a half ago that fall, I feel like John's full-time job for like two weeks, 40 hours was mm. looking for jars. And yeah. we, okay, wow. we have, we have a week supply. And wow. I just still have that, stress for <laughs> <Just like, laughs> again. But like, we have to have been able to work with mm. some soap mm -hmm. makers and, um, like bath and body, like lotion stuff, like lettuce, like we we have found stuff like lettuce help you. And, so good. And that's been really neat to yeah. see. If you're the one doing the sharing, then I think that's the better place to be than being the person, you know, I'm, I'm brand new and I need all the information right now so that I can follow all the rules and dot all the T's and have a super successful business. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, slow down, let the process take. Let's grab a cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Tear, tear a tent down together yeah. first. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. great. And, and yeah, good advice. You guys have shared so much about how the market's grown from the parking lot to the pavilion. What, are, what is your long-term vision that you would love to see the market grow into? Mm -hmm. We've gotten to really dig into that question and ask it as Jessica has come on full time. Cause that's really, she's a, a really big piece of that being our development director. Um, so it's been really fun to dream and to dig into that. But I think what we've really decided is that bigger isn't always better. We need to be sustainable. That is truly our branding and, and who we are. So we want to be solid. We want to have seeds that can become sequoias, something that's going to last, something that's going to go beyond just our time here and what that looks like. So I think that looks like really sowing into our vendor family. I think it's sowing into really establishing our programming, so that being like market talks, market cooks, um, mm -hmm. our music and yoga, um, but even our like professional development classes for our vendors, um, community space, like how do we prepare them to succeed and do well and do our job well. And so I think it's about creating the infrastructure mm -hmm. to last mm -hmm. more than anything in, in doing it really well instead of it being bigger and explosive. We want it to last. And I, I think that's so key in small businesses. It's just really easy to fall into the bigger is better. And this is my goal is bigger and bigger. And I think naming what matters. And for you guys, what I hear you saying is it's not about hitting those numbers and being the biggest and adding more vendors every summer, but it's about leaving that legacy where after you guys are done with the market, when when you do eventually move on, that the legacy is there in the community and it really mm -hmm. is an intricate fabric, a part of that community that is there. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, like I said, we're community owned, community run. I, I love that phrasing. It yeah. is ours to make sure that this is here for them. Well, and I think it communicates as we are, we are here to not just well, we're going to add on this and this value, but no, we're, we're here to serve you guys. What mm -hmm. does the community need? It sounds like you're really asking those yeah. questions, which is so neat to be. We are community servants. Why we do that through the market? Mm -hmm. Some of our programming that we're like really excited about is focused on educating kids or including them in what we're doing. And so like one new program that we're starting this year is called Young Entrepreneurs. And we're actually just launching that today. So we're really excited about that. Mm -hmm. We're able to do it in cahoots with one of our sponsors, Bridge City Coffee. It's a really similar vision that they have. Um, and so they've sponsored this program, but we're going to be inviting kids to apply mm -hmm. and to be vendors, quote, quote, at the market. Yeah. So we said that we would judge their business plan based on clear plan that they're like thinking about some of these things like how am I going to take money or what am I going to do or sell at the market and then secondly creativity so we want to see some really mm -hmm. interesting uh, types of business plans as well but that kind of thing like for young entrepreneurs or possibly like taking kids to visit farms in the, in the future mm -hmm. this is kind of more a couple years down the road but yeah. what can we do to pull our community in and help them to to be part of our, our programming so we're, we're excited about that is there an age limit like can i apply <laughs> <laughs> you no know, i think that you're doing really well as a young entrepreneur yourself <laughs> you're excellent. i love that it's not just pulling in the younger mm -hmm. aspect of game, but you're mm -hmm. pulling in the next generation of community builders yeah Together, i think so much people have to see they have to see it to learn it and so mm -hmm. when you're capturing these kids 
when they already have that entrepreneur spirit, mm-hmm. and you're showing them this is what community can look like. Mm-hmm. We're going to teach you, and then you can run with it. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's that's the most exciting thing, especially in yeah today. Like community is so needed. I think people mm-hmm. long for that, and they just don't have it. And so you, you're hands on the hands on and boots on the ground, showing them. Mm-hmm. Where they can Head over to our website, grab some candles, and take 20% off your first modern forestry order with promo code PODCAST20. I was getting migraines from traditional paraffin candles, so we started making soy candles on our kitchen stove with whole ingredients. Our hobby turned small business led us both to quit our jobs, and today we are full-time candle makers, living the small business dream like we've never imagined. Follow the Modern Forestry story, our growing family, and see studio behind the scenes over on Instagram. Our handle is Modern Forestry. Thanks so much for listening. We're grateful for the hustle.